Hi, and welcome to this step-by-step -step guide for mastering LaTeX. LaTeX is a technology for creating professional and high-quality documents. So there are two lecturers in this course. My name is Eirik. And my name is Dina. Between us, we have over 10 years experience with LaTeX. So why should you take this course? After completing the course, you'll first of all be able to create high-quality documents using LaTeX. You'll be confident in writing mathematical formulas in LaTeX, and you'll learn how to make presentations, such as this one, in Beamer. You'll know how to utilize colors and fonts to make your documents really stand out. And much more than this, you'll learn how to import images, make tables, make lists, make references, create a BibTeX database, custom commands, and so on. During this course, we will use Overleaf, an online LaTeX editor. The course will be filled with quizzes and exercises, so after the course, you will have plenty of experience using LaTeX. We've made this course because learning LaTeX can be hard. Unfortunately, LaTeX has a high learning curve, and it's not always easy to find good learning references for beginners. When we learned LaTeX, we mostly just Google what we needed. This resulted in copying code we did not really understand, as well as spending a lot of time on silly mistakes. The course is designed for absolute beginners that want to get to the point where one can write one's homework, thesis, or CV confidently by using LaTeX. If this sounds like you, we hope you give this course a try. Hi, and welcome to the course. In this first video, I just want to briefly talk about what LaTeX is and how it relates to other software that you might have seen previously. So first of all, what is LaTeX? Well, LaTeX is what's called a document preparation system and also called a typesetting system that essentially allows us to write high quality documents. When writing in LaTeX, what we write is text combined with what's called special commands, such as the one you can see here, the text BF. And this command will change the appearance of the text. Do not worry about this for now, we'll talk much more about this throughout the course. LaTeX was actually created in the 1980s by Leslie Lampert. LaTeX is built on top of a typesetting language called Tech, which was developed by Donald Knut. In 1994, the version called LaTeX 2E was released, which is the current standard version of LaTeX. There is work being done towards LaTeX 3, the next version, but this is far from being complete at the moment. What about pronunciation, first of all? So here's actually a quote from Leslie Lampert. One of the hardest things about LaTeX is deciding how to pronounce it. This is also one of the few things that I'm not going to tell you about LaTeX, since pronunciation is best determined by usage, not fiat. Tech is usually pronounced tech, making LaTeX and LaTeX the logical choices. But language is not always logical, so LaTeX is also possible. You cannot separate the two first letters as in LA Tech, but you can choose either LaTeX or LaTeX. It's completely your choice. It's very natural for me to compare this with Microsoft Word, which is a software that a lot more people are familiar with. So there are some disadvantages and advantages. A disadvantage of using LaTeX is that it has a higher learning curve in the beginning. Secondly, there is no click and drag feature. So in Microsoft Word, you can just click on things and then they will appear, but this is not the case in LaTeX. LaTeX is purely text-based. However, there are plenty of advantages to using LaTeX, one of them is much better control of the typesetting. It's infinitely much better when it comes to mathematics. It's better writing large documents. It takes care of the numbering automatically. As a final nice thing, you don't need a separate program like Microsoft PowerPoint to make presentations. The slides you're looking at right now, they're made in LaTeX. So LaTeX is in many ways a lot more multifunctional than Microsoft Word. So what is the difference between LaTeX and Overleaf? So if you've seen the description on this course, you can see that it takes place in Overleaf. Well, LaTeX is the actual language we'll be writing in to create our documents. On the other hand, Overleaf is just an online environment where we can write LaTeX and compile our documents so that it become the usual PDF documents you're probably used to. So an analogy here is that if LaTeX is football, then Overleaf is a football field. You play football on the football field in the same way you write LaTeX in, for instance, Overleaf, but they're not the same. I would like to note, however, before we end this introductory video, that you don't need to use Overleaf. There are actually plenty of other environments that you can write LaTeX in. One thing that really separates Overleaf is that it's online. This comes with both advantages, again, and disadvantages. The big advantage for us in this course is that you don't need to install anything on your personal computer, and we can just get started right away. 
I would strongly suggest you to use Overleaf throughout this course. After the course, I suggest that you take a look at other types of environments where you can also write LaTeX. So Overleaf has become a lot more popular in later years, both by beginners, because they're very beginner friendly, but also by professionals. Personally, I use Overleaf for almost everything when it comes to LaTeX. In the next couple of videos, Steen is going to show you how to get set up with Overleaf, some basic navigation inside that site. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon. Hi, and welcome. In this first video, we are going to look on how to register on Overleaf. To register, we can either do it down here, where you type in your email address and your password, and just press register. You can also register using Google, or if you have an ORCID account, you can register here. After you have registered, Overleaf will send you an email to confirm your email address. So let me just press confirm email. So let me just log in to my Overleaf account. So when we first log into Overleaf, we are welcomed with this start screen. To create a first project, we press create and blank project. And then we are asked to give the project a name, which are going to be first project. And then we press create. So if your screen looks something like this, we can drag this along here to make all three areas be visible. So the leftmost area is where we have all our files. The mid area is where we actually write the code and the text in our document. And the rightmost area is where our document is displayed. So let me just press hello world to make sure everything is okay and then press compile. And now we see that hello world have been added to a document. To compile, we can also press control enter, which is the shortcut we will use a lot. Hi and welcome. In the last video, we ended here in our first project. And to get back to our file directory, we can press the arrow in the upper left corner. So a file directory looks something like this. If we want to create a new project, we can press new project. And here we have several options, among which we can press upload project. Here we can upload our zip file containing the project. So let me now just make a new blank project as we did last time. Let me call this file second project and press enter. Okay, so this looks exactly the same as our first project. So let us now explore this environment a bit more. If we press the menu button, we see that we have several different options. First of all, we can download the source file in a zip file or the PDF file here. We can also copy the project and do a word count or syncing the project in any of these options. So first of all, here you have a compiler option. The first one tells you which compiler you're using and the second one is which version of tech you're using. If you are writing in another language than English, then we can set the spell check to that language. We can take the autocomplete off or on, the autoclose bracket off and on, code check off and on, and we can change the editor theme. So for instance, if I press SQL server, then we see that the color theme here changes. Another thing we can do is to change the overall theme, which basically changes the black here to white. So let me just undo that change. We can change the key bindings. So if you are writing in Vim or Emacs, you can do it here as well. 
We can change the font size, so let me just press 24 pixels. We can change the font family, the line height, or the PDF viewer from a built-in to a native one. In the end here, you can also see the hotkeys, so the shortcuts, here. And Overleaf also provide a lot of LaTeX documentation, which you can find by pressing this one. We can also download our PDF file by pressing here. In our next couple of videos, we will usually hide this file directory, which we do by pressing here. And we will make this here a little bit bigger, so it will be easier to see. Okay, see you again in the next couple of videos.